Hello everyone, and thanks for stopping by, as today we have a build that I'm very sure is going to bring some nostalgia back for some. The Way Splitter Trace Rifle, kind of an old weapon that many have forgot about, with an even odder way of an exotic to work. I'll be honest, it's a fun to play with weapon, but not so much viable as I would have hoped for. However, now I've found that we can make the weapon a lot more active through orbs of power generation, thanks to the Siphon mods. Through testing, you can achieve a constant damage buff by producing orbs of power with your trace rifle and can lead to some interesting takes with you added on the Void 3.0 abilities as well. If you have ever wanted to see just how viable this weapon can be, as of now in Witch Queen, then let me show you what I've been cooking. But you know what else is cooking and good looking? This channel right here, and if you enjoyed the content then do leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notification as it really does help me out. Starting with the subclass, we'll be using the Sentinel Bubble as our main base super. The plan for the build is to make sure we always have our super up and running, and then use the buffs given to enhance the weapon damage further and team support. Ideally, the build will play a more supportive role as you can only do so much with just a trace rifle, but it will allow a constant super and orbs to be created, which can be handy for raids for example. For all this to be done, we have the following aspects being used. Controlled Demolitionist allows us to make combatants become volatile via our abilities and upon detonation will grant us health back to me and my team. We then have Offensive Bulwark which will grant me faster grenade regen, increase melee regen and damage and extends our overshield timer by a few seconds. Both of these aspects will greatly help in keeping us alive as long as we need. For Fragments we have Echo Explosion where Voyability Thunder Blows will cause targets to explode, although this can be swapped out for Echo Harvest or Persistent instead. We then have Echo Remnants, where Void Grenade Durations get increased, Echo of Undermining, where Void Grenade weaken targets, and Echo of Reprisal, where Final Blows While Surrounded grant the Super Energy back. Now the subclass traits being used are to allow us to stay alive as much as we can, while also being able to dish out damage fairly well on all skills. Using Bubble as our super allows us to be the first person to pop it and provide extra cover and damage whenever we get hit at a certain point. I plan to use my super as much as I can, so I can get orbs of power from others and use that to activate the Waste Blitter exotic trait when we like. Of course, this won't be the only thing supporting the build, so as such, we have the stats and mods that equally will be important as the subclass itself. For our resilience, recovery and intellect, we have them at 60, which is a byproduct of the armor stats alone. We then have discipline at 70, which will help with extra damage and debuff from combatants at will. For mods, we have Font of Might for the 25% weapon damage buff with matching subclass type, Battle for Well for extra well on creation, Font of Wisdom for a plus 15 in intellect, although this can be swapped out if you feel it's too much, Reaping Wellmaker, which allows us to create a well upon activation of our barricade, and Elemental Ordnance, which allows us to create a well via grenades. You may have noticed that I'm using the Crest of Alfie Loopy as part of the build, and this is to allow us to create extra orbs of power via super and grant us a healing aura while near it. Like mentioned, we want to create a build where survival is our main priority, but creating orbs is the main plan of action as well. With high defense and high offense, and the three ways of having weapon enhancements available, you can bring this into any high level endgame content you wish, as long as you don't over push it. So now this leads us to the weapon, which is nice and simple. My primary is the submission SMG with Encore and Demolitionist. Great weapon to use for its high rate of fire and maneuverability for those that stay on the go. I tend to use this when my secondary runs out of ammo, or if I can't reload in time, and it works a treat when pulled out as it can destroy a large crowd with ease. With the added on demo perk, this can allow me to produce grenades faster and create wells even more faster, which all in all, benefits us in the long run. Alternatively, the IS Luna hand cannon is another great weapon to use if we want something more harder hitting with a bit more range added to it. For our secondary now, we have the Way Splitter, and boy oh boy, I never thought the day would come when this weapon would finally become viable. It's odd, as the weapon's exotic trait is interesting when you look at it at first, but seems also limited at first. Now, through its oscillation ability, you can get a 10% damage increase on level 2, or a 30% damage increase on level 3, and that's just from sustaining this damage for long. Now, when you activate a supercharged battery, you can get a 20% damage increase on top of the level you're currently on, so level 3 plus the damage boost will give you a 56% damage buff for however long you have the weapon active. But thanks to the recent change in how orbs of power work, you can have this timer up near infinite, and it really does melt a combatant when it's active. Now add on volatile rounds as well, and you'll be adding on a new war crime to the Geneva Convention list. 
For Heavy, we have the Red Herring Rocket Launcher with Field Prep and Frenzy. And this is a great weapon to use for sheer damage and ability to weaken combatants' damage over time via its origin trait. As the Rocket Scavenger mod is available for cheap, now is a great time to use it before next season and the rise of the Heavy Machine Guns buff. Now for stats, we don't have a specific amount of things that need to be focused on to make the build viable, as a lot of the build in general is aimed towards survival and standard abilities being used. What I mean is you don't have to heavily invest into your discipline or strength or intellect as all of these abilities will be used in one way or another. So in many ways, if you don't have the stats available, then you can breathe a sigh of relief. Although, this doesn't mean we should ignore them entirely. For resilience, as an example, we have ours at 60, but this can be increased to 70 or 80 as you'll be using the chest of Alfie Loopy a lot when your super isn't available. The overshield and constant healing available can allow you to survive for a very long time in legend and matter content, and has been a lifesaver for me in the thick of things. With things like Reaping Wellmaker, Battleful Well, and Well of Ordnance available, you can, if you wish, ignore increasing this level and just rely on collecting wells instead, which will be plentiful. This is the same for Discipline as well, as you'll be relying on worlds constantly to refill this area quickly. I do however have the Perpetration mod, so I can get my class ability up quickly as well, so do also keep that in mind. Now the one and probably the most important mod to keep in mind is the Void Siphon and Harmonic Siphon mod for your helmet. Both of these mods will allow you to create orbs of power very quickly, and upon application you can easily get that 56% damage buff constantly. However, you're gonna eat through ammo very quickly, and this becomes a major problem the longer the encounter goes. Now, I highly, highly recommend you think this part through as to what you want to do here, as this can impact you depending on how greedy your ammo is. Having the Trace Rival Ammo Finder mod and Special Finishing mod is the best and safest way to go about using the build, even at the cost of less orbs. Now, this should cover all the mods that, to me personally, you'll need, as it's pretty straightforward from here on out. Now, here are the mods compiled into one to make it easier to take notes on. Now, for head, we have Trace Rifle Ammo Final mod, Void Siphon and Front of Might mod. Arm, we have Discipline, Fastborn, Battle for Well mod. Chest, we have Discipline, Cocus of Dampner, Thermal Shot Plating and Front of Wisdom mod. Leg, we have Discipline, Trace Rifle Scavenger, Rocket Launcher Scavenger, and Reaping Wellmaker mod. And Mark, we have Discipline, Special Finisher, Perpetration, and Elemental Ordnance mod. So now that you have the build created, you can go out on a complete rampage with this fantastic mid to end game loadout. It's odd that not much people have talked about wave splitters since the release of Witch Queen, as it's both a void elemental weapon and benefited from the orb of power change. As it's been so long lacking a catalyst without a way to make orbs for itself, wave splitter has always been kind of languished for most people, and although some have found it to be really strong in PvP, this alone covers only a small fraction as to what a proper build around it can do. It was neat, but it just wasn't good enough. One of the few silver linings to the orb change that I realised when it was outlined was that the wave splitter would be able to make his own orbs and thus have effectively have a bottomless magazine and permanent bonus damage that can reach a max of 53% if everything falls together. The supercharged battery perk has been left stagnant for how it operates, but now, it can really shine like a true exotic it should do. And you know what? This can be done via Hunters and Warlocks as well, through the Battle Harmony and Star Eaters exotics, both exotics that allow you to build up orbs of power over time for a large output of damage. Watching it eat through Majors to mini boss itself once fully charged and released is quite crazy with how fast it can chew through everything, and on top of that, you'll be creating more orbs while at it, so you can keep this going for as long as you can. And this is why I said it's important you have some ammo finder mods for this weapon, as it will heat through ammo very very fast, and by the time you do stop firing, you only have a few bits of ammo left over. One other thing to be aware of as well, is if you are stacked up in super energy, you cannot collect any more orbs left over for the damage buff until you use said super. Now you can reduce your intellect level, or you can swap your super to something that takes longer to charge. But personally, this won't be a big issue as the super we are using will benefit us even when we don't have any damage buffs available. This is definitely an interesting build that I'm quite glad to finally get out. Personally, if you enjoy these type of builds with unique functions, then you'll love this. And if you love using trace rifles, then this should be on your radar for the next best thing. It can work in endgame pretty well, just don't try this in something like Grandmasters as that's pushing it. 
but if you're a masochist, then by all means go ahead and try it. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with any new changes. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.